time around on Hello Day, we're all about the one thing that makes the world go round. Not money, but love. Global speaker Swami Shubhamrita is a disciple of Amma the Hugging Saint, teaching life principles as he moves along. He was in Kenya recently to speak on managing expectations, sharing his strategies for peace and balance in life. And a lot of it has to do with the L word. Enjoy our 10 minute conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Shiko, for having me on the show. Welcome thank to you. Kenya. How is Kenya treating you? Oh, I love this country. Uh -huh. And, you know, it's a very beautiful country. And yeah, uh, many of us, the yeah. concept of hearing about the hugging saint is still a very foreign idea. Why don't you explain to us what the concept behind the hugging saint? It all started at a very young age for her. She had that dream and I'm going to build uh, schools, I'm going to build hospitals, I'm going to build homes, mm -hmm. I'm going to take care of as many people as I can. Right. As a little girl, she had this vivid dream. Mm -hmm. Every person kind of started expecting that from Amma yeah. as she gives a hug and right. then listens to them. Mm -hmm. And that's what Amma does. It really points out to mm -hmm. the current state of the world yeah. where selfishness is so rampant. Everybody is thirsting for that love. Mm -hmm. Everybody is thirsting for that peace. Yeah. And uh, many a times you don't get it oh. you know, around because everybody is caught up in their own cocoon. Yeah. They are not able to kind of see the pain of the other, mm. understand the, the sorrow of the other person. It's funny that we have been conditioned to put up barriers to protect ourselves. At the same time, all we want is that peace and love. When you kind of show that emotion, when mm. you kind of show it openly, yeah. you don't know the way others are going to interpret it. Mm -hmm. You don't know how they're going to talk about it, judge you, mm -hmm. you know, pass judgments about you. Yeah. So you are always kind of holding it back, mm -hmm. you know, acting as a very different person. Yeah. But when you go to somebody like Amma, mm -hmm. you feel you can be totally open to her. Why is it so important to pay attention to the type of energies um, that are around us, that surround us, be it good or bad? It all depends on the way our mind is. Right. See, it all depends on what we really nurture. Mm -hmm. Because positive thoughts and emotions, yeah. as we nurture them, mm -hmm. the energies that we give out yeah. are also positive. I like but that. But if the yeah. thoughts are more negative, yeah. you know, if we are filled with anger, resentment, hatred towards people, and people can feel it yeah. around. So yeah. I think it all depends on, on what we yeah. really cultivate. Calculating the positive needs more work. Emotional intelligence is a hard concept to get. Um, looking at you, Swami, looking at even someone like a spiritual leader like Ama, I mean, you're human at the end of the day. How are you able to overcome those negativities um, from day to day? Because anything could happen and anything could trigger something. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is that uh, it's true around us we have sometimes people mm. or we are in situations where yeah. you know you have negativity around yeah but i think if we have the proper skill set the toolkit mm. we don't need to accept everything that is around us and give it a place you know say no thank you mm. and that happens through higher thinking yeah. and with, you said about emotional intelligence it's yeah. very true you have the proper uh, clarity and discernment to think yeah you can turn every such situation into an advantage correct you know, look at the uh, statistics of the united nations you know yeah. with the with the diseases uh, you see that uh, uh, there is this prediction that by 2030 mm. mental illness could be the front runner amongst it's, all diseases right this has really affected society a lot learning the techniques of mind management mm -hmm. uh, which unfortunately we don't learn much in school or we don't get taught our parents may not know much about it mm -hmm. or our teachers may not be skilled enough to tell mm -hmm. us about it mm -hmm. all this starts affecting the mind yeah. they don't really find this personal time mm -hmm. to really rejuvenate themselves right and i yeah. feel that is very important I think it's also a vicious cycle, uh, Swami, because when you start having your mind racing like that, yeah. there are those individuals who probably just didn't, you know, have that kind of love, mm -hmm. that acceptance that we we're talking about in mm -hmm. the beginning. Mm -hmm. 
that has crept up with them even into their adult years. Mm -hmm. um, do you see a lot of that, that there are people who just say, I've never felt loved, I've never felt good enough? You really struggle with it quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Giving them the support, mm -hmm. giving them the, the solace, giving them the appreciation mm -hmm. and helping them come out. So to make them confident about what they carry within, yeah. that's also very important. Yeah. Because what happens is, things may not always be the same. People right. can change, mm -hmm. situations can change, mm -hmm. minds can change. Mm -hmm. Everything in the world is in a process of change. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to expect happiness, support from, an, uh, from a changing world, mm -hmm. which may not always be constant. Correct. So when you kind of find the source within, mm -hmm. it really transforms your being. According to Swami, these teachings cut across all regions. That's because at the core of what we all believe, love takes center stage. And God, no matter what his title in your life, is love. Mm -hmm. The practices, the rituals may be different, mm -hmm. but the essence of every religion is the same. Right. It is love. If you are a Hindu, be a better Hindu. Mm -hmm. If you are a Christian, be a better Christian. If you are a Muslim, be a better Muslim. In reality, it's the wrong understanding of religion. Amma says it very beautifully. She says people are ready to die in the name of religion, but very few people are ready to live in the name of religion. And that's what we want. We want people to understand their religion in the, what is it in essence, and they understand that it's about love, it's about compassion, it's about service. Mantras, also known as sacred utterances, have become part of pop culture. Be a trend today, but having the right mantras for your personal daily growth are key. Uh, you know, mantras are also there in every religion. You know, certain utterances that uh, you practice, you know, you chant. It could be the glory of, of God. It could be about a quality, you know, a value that you cherish. So the mantras of that way are different. You know, for me, there are certain mantras that make a lot of sense. Happiness is a decision. That's a mantra that I feel is something that we need to remember all the time. Situations outside can change. People can change. Yeah. But my happiness should be in my hands. It is a decision that I take that whatever comes, I'll be happy, I'll be strong. Definitions of success keep changing. The definition of progress keeps changing. But the real mantras that stay in life are mantras like this, yeah. you know, of understanding happiness, understanding the realities of world, understanding the realities of life. Jainism, Jainism, Hinduism all believe in reincarnation. As a parting shot, it's important to be good. Our reward or punishment could be in your next life or next generation, according to Swami. You get served what you deserve. Do good, of course it gets recorded. Good comes back to you. You do bad, you have to face the consequences of that in one way or the other. It may not be that the exact same thing happens to you, but there is some other suffering coming in some other way. You know, it could be in many forms. It could be in diverse forms. So basically, anything that we, we do has its consequences. How we can all begin is through the small things, by being there for people in our lives. There is always room to touch a heart, Swami says. We can start with small steps. We can see how we can kind of touch the lives of at least a few people around us. Many times we don't see it. And the next time you feel it's over, listen to the anecdote from Swami. I just wanted want to end this with a small anecdote. There was a person who was uh, on a bridge and uh, he was really... In, uh, desperate because he had huge losses in his business, lost all hope, nobody to support, nobody to give him any kind of uh, strength and, and relief. And he decides to end his life jumping into a river. He is on the middle of a, standing in the middle of a bridge waiting to jump. He sees a person at the end of the bridge coming and he thinks in his mind, if this person stops, as he passes me and he smiles at me or says a few words of encouragement. I will not jump into it. I will try again. 
I will go back and try to see what I can do. But if he just ignores me, yeah. I'm going to jump into the river. The story ends here. The question is, if that person is you, who is the one who is entering the bridge, will this person jump into the river or will he decide to, to try again? This is a question we need to ask ourselves. Many thanks to Trademark Hotel for hosting the Hello Day podcast. This special feature with Swami was recorded at Trademark Hotel.